Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Okay, so this was Sean Spicer today at the press conference, uh, squarely laying everything at the feet of the department, uh, the the Justice Department, for not notifying the White House counsel sooner. Um, I don't know where the White House counsel, John McGahn, is. Uh, I have no idea where he's been. I mean, you have Kellyanne Conway, Hocken, uh, you know, Ivanka, all kinds of ethical things are going on. And now all of a sudden, uh, you know, it's, oh, John McGahn did this very, uh, you know, uh, you know, expansive uh, investigation into whether or not Flynn was telling you know i'm not sure what the white house counsel um you know does (laughs) so i thought i would reach out to a former white house counsel you know if you want to know what the job is i suppose you should talk to somebody who was one and john dean was one when uh, president richard nixon if the president does it it's not illegal uh was president so i reached out and john said yes thank you i know you're so busy john dean but thank you for being here thanks randy haven't talked to you since probably conservatives without a conscience too long how many books ago was that (laughs) <laughs> uh, two. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. Anyway, um, you know, I, I've, I've watched and, 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 and listened and read uh, that you, you believe that uh, this man, this, this Donald Trump and his team is going to test our democracy like it's never been tested. And God knows we've been tested under the, uh, the, the, the Cheney and the, the, the Newt Gingriches and the, you know, impeachments and the, you know, Nixons and all. But this is really, really something different but before we we talk about authoritarian personalities and 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 why trump is one uh, and that makes him exploitable by the way um uh, could we talk about this press conference did you happen to see uh spicer today lay everything at don mcgann's feet the white house counsel i did not but i i i saw it on the uh wire services story of it mm-hmm. and the whole thing of laying it on the department of justice and and the White House counsel, the timing stuff, it's just baloney. Uh, you know, they they had the information. Uh, one of the reasons the Justice Department didn't bring it over earlier is because Comey was conducting an investigation, and he was worried that by telling the White House, it would disrupt his investigation, which we still don't know anything about. So that hasn't re- been revealed. It appears to be ongoing. Yes. And, and, and of course, you know, this is beyond uh, law enforcement. This has to do with national security and intelligence. And I'm sure Comey is doing exactly what, uh, you know, is required when you're dealing with something uh, as, as, as treacherous as national security intelligence and whether or not uh, we've got three men, at least in the Trump administration, uh, Carter Page, Paul Manafort, and now Michael Flynn, who made deals with Russia uh, that, that, that said that if you uh, soften sanctions or if you promise uh, you know, to uh, not arm Ukraine, uh, will release documents and denigrate and and and, and make impossible uh, Hillary Clinton's candidacy. This which they did, which did a nice job of doing. <laughs> they certainly did. But uh, you know, this this press conference today, Spicer was laying out a timeline, but his timeline did not begin until December. Uh, we know that the D- that the Republican National Committee's platform. Uh, was softened and changed with regard to Russia and uh, Ukraine being armed with lethal weapons. Uh, They changed lethal weapons to, you know, we'll do whatever we need to do to help, uh, you know, Ukraine out, but not lethal weapons, Uh, way back in July. So how could this be Don McGahn's fault and the Department of Justice's fault if all this predates Flynn's recorded conversations where... Uh, the topic of discussion was specifically sanctions. It wasn't an aside. It wasn't a Merry Christmas. It was a whole, you know, five phone calls. And at least one uh, was about, don't worry, you know, uh, President Obama's sanctions will go away. Well, just as you know what this is, everybody else does, too. It's smoke. And, and it, it doesn't really sell. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the press is going to look through it. It's going to blow out with the next breeze. Uh and Spicer himself probably is, 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 may not be there for the next press conference. Or yeah, I, I, I think he's next, too. I really do. I think he's the next casualty. But um, I got to say, you know, you, you, you uh, make a really good point when I listen to, you know, the things that you offer up, you know. And one of the things that you said is that this is a different era. It's a different time. People are a lot more tolerant of lawbreaking now. Uh, they, 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 everything they don't like is fake. You know, even though 
these events unfolded exactly the way, you know, people who study politics, you, me, a whole host of others, this is not, you know, uh, anything that, that we couldn't see coming. We all said this was going to happen, and then it happens, and people told me, you know, while I was saying it, that I was making stuff up and that it was fake news, and then the news actually happens, and, and they just move on to the next thing that is fake. Do you know, what is going on? Why do you think America is so tolerant of, of cozying up to foreign governments that are our adversary uh, and saying anything to the contrary that I would say, that you would say, that, that I, I just uh, uh, did uh, talk to Malcolm Nance, you know, an intelligence officer would say, this is all fake. What is, what is this? Well, I don't, I don't think Americans are particularly tolerant of, of, of reported and, and fake news, uh, using that as a, an excuse. Uh, you've got to remember, first of all, that Trump's voters and supporters are low-information voters. They, they don't really want this information. They don't know what to do with it when they get it. Uh, they really probably can't, many of them can tell you, there are three branches of government. Uh, <laughs> and the problem is that their leader, uh, our new president, doesn't know much more than they do. Uh, that's the most frightening <laughs> oh, thing that is me. scary. That, that, that's and it is frightening. I, I think, uh, Randy, I think a lot of what's going on, for example, like, all of the chaos, they say, well, this is his, this is his approach, chaos. Right. Well, that's baloney. Uh, that, that's trying to, to re-spin the chaos that's happening because he's so ignorant, because his staff won't even call somebody in to give them a tour of the place to show them where the lights are in the cabinet room. I mean, it, 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 it's pathetic. It goes day after day. Uh, the, I'm told that the West Wing is really uh, about not even 50% functioning. Mm. Uh, the, the, the place, uh, you know, people that don't know what to do. Uh, I've never seen a, a White House put out more press material with typos. I mean, they don't even have a good editorial system, even. Yeah, it's true. It's true. And, you know, one of the one of the criteria I've always had, because, you know, uh, after, let's say, 99, 2000, those years, you know, everything became Internet. And I would whatever, you know, a news organization I was reading, if there was a typo, I just said, this isn't real. And, you know, just moved on to something that that was like. And so I just confined myself to The New York Times, The Wall Street Journal and The Washington Post, The Guardian. You know what I mean? I even uh, fact checked something with uh, with Malcolm Nance today that was in The Independent. And he told me who the um, the secret guy, you know, the anonymous uh, tipster was. And he said, this guy is, you know, he's 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 full of crap. <clears throat> but I got to tell you, you know, the comparisons to Nixon are so strong. But you you always said that there was something, you know, uh, redeeming about Nixon in that if you had a one on one conversation with him, um, you could see him checking his authoritarian tendencies. You could see him softening and saying the president shouldn't do that. President shouldn't say that, right? There were lines he would not cross. And I'm and, not sure. I'm not sure that there are any that Donald Trump would either knowingly or unknowingly not cross. And he wouldn't be even asking others where the lines are. They have broken so many norms. That's one of the most encouraging things about what's happened in the last 24 hours, is that the weight of public opinion uh, has finally had an impact on this man and his administration. They forced uh, Flynn out. Uh, that was the, the, the Washington Post and New York Times stories last night uh, pushed the needle over, and, and Trump couldn't handle it anymore. It shows that he cannot defy all norms. So that's a little bit of encouragement that there might be a check on this guy who, one, doesn't know what he's doing, and two, what he does know, he thinks he has the authority to do anything he wants to. And yeah. he's got some staffers who uh, buy into that, too. This fellow, Stephen Miller, oh my God. May, may be the most obnoxious White House staffer I've ever seen. I've been watching that staff for 50 years. Yeah, you know, somebody uh, somebody did one of these internet memes, you know, and they, they put uh, Stephen Miller's face next to Mr. Burns from The Simpsons, and it was uncanny. I mean, it was just, the resemblance was crazy off the hook. Yeah, he, he is a real bully, that kid. He he just got in people, you will not question, and this is not to be questioned. And, I, I mean, the reaction from the entire, uh, you know, journalistic community, let alone the punditry, was that people's mouths lit 
literally fell to the floor. And Trump is tweeting, great job. Stephen represented right. us on all the Sunday show. Great job. What did he think was great about that person, uh, you know, attacking the judiciary branch, which seems to be the only branch that can check Donald Trump? Do you think that's a coincidence? Well, that was, that was true until last night, and it's, cr- it's clear that... Uh the media can have an impact as well. Thank God, right? And this is why he attacks both of those uh, areas, in my best he, guesstimate. He's trying to discredit them. Right. And, and that's it's, what, uh, it is that's working. what authoritarian personalities do. They discredit those who can check their, their power. You say he's thrilling but dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. I, I, I think that's, that's really true. I mean, every day I wake up and, you know, uh, uh, Howard You've been said, reading my tweets. Oh, I, I, well, you know I follow you on Twitter. You know I do. <laughs> I messaged you privately, for God's sake. I don't do that with anybody. It took me, I don't know, 15 minutes to figure out how. <laughs> well, share my, hand, my, share my handle so your listeners can follow. Oh, well, he's, I, I, I just put in at, at John, John W. W. Dean, right? At John W. Dean. Yeah, that's you. He's at John W. Dean. Go ahead and follow John Dean, because I do, and uh, we tweet back and forth a lot. In fact, do you see me tweeting to you last night? I said, at John Dean is Sally is at Sally Q. Yates. Uh, uh, she is the John Dean in this scenario. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I tweeted her. I tweeted you last night, because, you know, it's so interesting that whatever Comey is doing is obviously going, it, it obviously does and has required FISA warrants. Okay. And when they fired Sally Yates, who tried to tell them where we've got recordings for Pete's sake, you are blackmailable now. He fired her. And the little detail that really blew my mind was that at she was the only person up until Sessions was confirmed to, who was able to sign off on a FISA warrant. And I think, no, I think I think the guy they brought in from the Eastern District was, too. Oh, yeah? Which is why they brought him in. Oh. It has to be somebody who has a Senate confirmation, mm-hmm. uh, which a U.S. attorney from uh, any of the uh, 113 or whatever there are oh, okay. U.S. attorneys all right. are all Senate approved. So that he would have had the authority, too. You see, I'm dying for 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 Comey's uh, uh, you know investigation to to be complete, but I I think it's going to take at least a year, and so people that want uh, you know the the four year to not be four years, <laughs> I tell them that it probably won't be, but it's going to be a year of this. Well, hopefully the Congress, uh, you know, there's there's very very few privileges that uh, uh, Flynn could claim if he gets called up to the the Hill. Uh, Particularly in close session, the oh, intelligence yeah. I, committee. Yeah, because I was going to so, say, won't he cloak himself in executive privilege with any conversation he's had, even though he's not under the umbrella anymore? He, he, he can do that for twenty-three days. Oh, that's but anything it. That, that, and and the most important stuff is probably what happened before uh, he was president. He was before he was president, and yeah. that is certainly there's no privilege there. Got it. Oh, that's interesting. That's really cool. Um, and what, 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 do you think we'll ever talk to uh, Paul Manafort and find out how he was able to lobby a foreign government without registering as a foreign lobbyist? I think he's. Uh, I think he's going to take the fifth. But th- that's a, that's the other possibility with uh, Flynn. He'll take the fifth. Oh wow. And uh, Carter Page, we don't hear much about, but he was the first foreign policy advisor and uh, did some... Well, talk to Malcolm about Carter Page. I, I did. <laughs> he, he will bend your ear on that. Oh, man. And, and, and has a lot of interesting information. Yes, uh, there's just not enough time in the day to talk to you two people. Uh, you know, the two of you have uh, you know, sparked my... Uh, awareness of 23 days and taking the fifth and all these things I hadn't really thought all the way through but that's why it was so valuable to have you here today so it's in conclusion this is not uh, the Don McGahn the White House counsel's uh, problem right no no this is not the Department of Justice's issue no no this is uh, Comey is investigating and it will take you know at least a year maybe not maybe not well uh, you know yeah, you know what would be interesting is if they start a grand jury on this, that will expedite it considerably. Now, who would who would have to uh, authorize that? There are two two sites that might do a grand jury. One would be the the Eastern District of Virginia over in Alexandria. Yeah, uh, and the other would be the District of Columbia. Those 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 U.S. attorneys have not been appointed yet. The there are acting. Uh, ones there now that are just 
really the top level staff career people. Uh, but you know, it, it, the Department of Justice can show surprising independence. Uh, Jeff Sessions has got so many conflicts in any investigation relating to this. He'd have uh, to recuse he, himself. He has to recuse himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's ineffective just at the get go. Yeah, I, I get it. Well, I'll I'll keep watching the Eastern District. If anything happens, I'll tweet you and and you can come on and educate me about how that process works. All right. Thank you. Good luck, Randy. Thanks, John Dean. Really appreciate Bye-bye. your time today. Thank you, John W. Dean. Everybody, uh, he he wants. <clears throat> He loves to be tweeted at. I'll tell you, I, I've been tweeting him for a while. And, uh, you know, John is um, John is 78 years old and uh, he tweets better than I do, which is saying something terrible about myself. <laughs> but uh, he is at uh, John W. Dean and he, he he's an amazing person to follow because, like, I, like he said, if uh, if 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 one of these acting attorney generals, because there isn't an attorney general in either of, you know, D.C. and not in Eastern Virginia. So if these career people who are actually better suited because they're not political, they're career attorneys, they're, they're prosecutors. Uh, you remember when Bush went and purged all the prosecutors? Yeah. So these, these are the ones that are left. Uh, they're career prosecutors. And if they asked for a grand jury, wouldn't that be fascinating? Wouldn't that be interesting? So then you'd have Manafort and all the camera crews following him into a grand jury. You'd have Carter Page, who did a multi, multi-million dollar deal with Rosneft, the Russian oil company, right after he left the Trump campaign as foreign policy advisor. Now you have Michael Flynn, the national security advisor. Who's just, they would all take the... I mean, this could be, just as John Dean says, thrilling but dangerous. <laughs> All right, 26 after. Go to randyroads.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.